Beloved, and welcome to On the Living Edge. I'm Dr. Mark Sharona, and I'm delighted that you've chosen to spend this time with me. As always, right at the beginning, I want to say a heartfelt thank you to all of our Edge partners who enable us to take the gospel to 180 nations and counting all around the world. You are the difference that makes the difference, and I am ever so grateful. I'm really excited about this brand new series. As we move further into the new year, I am persuaded that for the body of Christ, there is a springtime coming in the spirit in the midst of all the darkness and all the gloom and all the challenge. I'm persuaded that the body of Christ is getting ready for one of the greatest outpourings of the spirit we've ever seen. Because of that, I've got a brand new series called The Dawn is Breaking that I believe is going to open up your internal awareness by the revelation of the spirit to your potential in God through the life of Jacob. As you know, in the life of Jacob, there comes a wrestling moment where the angel says, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But what we don't realize is that the dawn begins to break the moment he leaves home and has a dream of a ladder that reaches to heaven. Open your heart, open your mind, open the book of Genesis. The dawn is breaking. Then Jacob departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and laid down in that place. He had a dream. And behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will also be like the dust of the earth. And you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in you and in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep, and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. I want you to pay particular attention to verse 14, where it says, Your descendants will also be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in you and in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed and we will trust father to not only add his blessing to the public reading of his word but by his spirit to make it applicable as a right now word to where you are, where we are, where you're going, and where we're going. Somebody give God a shout. <laughs> Declare one more time, the dawn is breaking. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. One more time. Give him one more shout. You may be seated. Time does not permit us to go into extensive detail on all the dynamics involved in the journey of Jacob from the acquisition of the birthright in the tent of his father Isaac to the release of the blessing when he becomes Israel after the all-night wrestling match. Suffice it to say that if I were to take you on a journey 
line by line through this entire narrative, we would be here for no less than a year. I could do a series and make Jacob the entire theme of this entire year, and I promise you, you would not tire from hearing, oh, Bishop's going to go back and teach us about Jacob. There are things here that are larger than you and I realize, and the Scripture doesn't get smaller the more we learn it. It gets larger. There is something about revelation that enlarges us. When we talk about the dawn breaking, we are talking about a moment of revelation that breaks through into our darkness and unleashes something within us that we have been yearning for, longing for, but can't quite put words to what we're feeling. The reality is there are things you feel that you don't have adequate words to describe. Sadly, we lose something in the journey from childhood to adulthood as it relates to the level of ability we have to put words to our feelings. We live in a culture that has devalued the emotional and feeling content of the human experience. And I want you to understand there is a relationship, but there's also a difference between emotion and feeling. The old preacher said it's better felt than telt. And there's a reason for that, because you and I need to come to terms with the fact that feelings run deeper than emotions, and feelings don't think, they actually influence our thinking. And again, I'm letting you know a feeling is different than an emotion. And it's a feeling because you feel it. That's deep, isn't it? An emotion is a mental dynamic. A feeling involves your whole person, including your nerves. And so, when we look at this moment where Jacob leaves Beersheba and heads toward Haran, he is now in a journey of exile. He didn't want to leave home. He didn't want to be in a place where everything that was familiar, everything that nurtured and shaped and formed his sense of stability, his sense of what it is to be supported, his sense of all the conventional things that we take for granted. Are you breathing? Have you ever felt like you were chased from your blessing? Have you ever felt like the one thing you wanted, when you finally got it, you couldn't even relax and enjoy it because you got chased out of your comfort zone. There is a moment where all of a sudden Jacob is being exiled. Abraham got a word, Isaac got a word, Jacob gets the boot. He gets the left foot of fellowship. <laughs> and he's on the run. Now you need to hear me. This is a guy who has spent his whole life developing his inner world. Jacob has spent his whole life developing his inner world. His brother, Esau, has spent his whole life developing his outer world in the outer world. And Jacob's got to run in the direction of the territory Esau knows like the back of his hand. If you go hunt lions and wild animals 
and foul and all that sort of stuff. You got to go into the wilderness where Jacob had to go. So Jacob in running, have you ever felt like you were being chased in a dream, but you couldn't run fast enough or far enough? Help me. That's, yeah, that's what, I mean, just think about this. Just think about this. You know the old song, you can run, but you can't hide? And so Jacob is running for his life. He hasn't even got a word. He's got a blessing he can't enjoy, and he's running for his life. Feels like what's motivating him is a mountain of fear and uncertainty and instability and a sense of where do I go now mama and daddy are sending me to uncle Laban's house Ooh, if you want to talk about a deceiver he is about to go out of the frying pan into the fire and when you get to the moment after 21 years when he leaves Laban Laban makes the statement you always yearned for your father's house in Genesis 31. Which means there's something in Jacob that wants to recapture a sense of home. Home is important. But when home brings pain, what you have to live with is a dream of home in a nightmare where it didn't work. Are you listening to me? And all of us were built with a need for home. That's why Psalm 68 says he placed the solitary in families. He placed the solitary in families. What is he talking about? Ultimately, covenantally, we've all been adopted as sons into his house and home. Isaac, at least in his life, had Eleazar to bridge the gap between Sarah and Rebekah. Jacob had nobody. He left without a word. He left without a person. Went into hostile territory on the chance he'll get a bride in mountainous regions where his uncle Laban lives and his mommy grew up. This is all chance. Everything is up in the air. Everything is up for grabs. I wonder how many people in the room feel like right now everything in your future is tenuous and up for grabs. And here's the other thing. The days of strategic planning in a day of unprecedented, unexpected change are over. You've got to learn in these days how to be adaptable, how to be flexible, how to keep your feet moving, and how in a moment when you least expect, be able to stand on those feet when there's nothing to stand on. Because everything that can be shaken is being shaken, and you need to remember that there is one in you in whose kingdom you operate who is unshakable. Somebody give him a shout. <laughs> Jacob can't... Listen, it says, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And what do you do when you leave and cleave? You build your own house. You build your own house. But Jacob has left his house, doesn't know where he's going to build his house, and he's in hostile territory in between, and he's running uphill for his life at 76 years old. Life isn't always fair. Life isn't always fair. 
and he happens upon a certain place. And the word happens, paga, happens upon or lights upon in the original in the original Hebrew means he collides with a certain place. How many of you feel like you've been in a head-on collision recently in your journey of faith? Well, here's what the word actually means. The word means what you are running towards that you don't know is already running towards you and is going to intercept you so that you won't have to feel like you haven't got a place to go. God has you on a collision course with a moment where heaven is going to open up the dawn is going to prematurely break before the ultimate trans trans transfer of that blessing. And you are going to discover while you're on the run that there's a God who is the author and the finisher of your faith. And that God began a good work in you. And what he's doing in you right now is good. And he will not fail you or forsake you. He's already moving toward you. The old gospel song said it best if you take one step he'll take two ain't no limit what God can do you're on a collision course with a promise you're on a collision course with a blessing you're on a collision course with the breaking of a dawn of a new day you're on a collision course with a God who wants to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond all you could ask or think or imagine. He loves you so much that he who began a good work is ordering every one of your steps even when you don't know how to put one foot in front of another and you feel like you got to throw out your GPS because you're in a territory without maps and you've never been there this way before on all your ways uncertain unstable unsure acknowledge him and he will make a straight path for your feet just trust him he's in your feet he's in your feet he's taking you someplace he's taking you there make sure every step is a step of faith because faith faiths it till it makes it don't Fake it till you make it. Faith it till you make it. Somebody give Jesus. Come on in here. Somebody needs to get excited. Somebody needs to give him a shout. Jacob, where are you going? I don't know. But I came upon a certain place. A certain place. A certain place. In all your uncertainty, you are about to have a collision with certainty. You may feel uncertain, but you have a divine appointment with a certain place, which means you may not know the place, but the place certainly knows you and has been waiting for this moment for you to arrive. Touch somebody and say, he's talking to me. And I dare you give Jesus another shout of praise. Oh! We ought to have a little bit of church in here. Somebody needs to give him some crazy praise. He's a good God. And he's up to something good. Came upon a certain place. Everybody say a 
certain place. Ah. And by the time he got there, it got dark. I want you to understand God will so order your steps when you get to the place that's certain he'll turn the lights out. Because he wants you to learn how to walk by and not by Stay with me. Why is it important? Because until you learn how to pray in the dark, your dawn won't break. Look at somebody and say, he's talking to me. I'm in a season where I got to learn how to pray in the dark. I'm not going to be afraid of the terror by night. Things may be dark, but I've got a certain place I have an appointment with where God is going to open heaven and reveal something to me I've been waiting for. He will not disappoint me if I learn how to pray in the dark. Somebody in here ought to help me preach. certain place and there's a bunch of stones in the place and they're in a particular order somebody has been here before me come on now I need you to know you're walking on a foreordained pathway and you may think no one's ever been where you're going but when you get to the certain place you're going to discover God's already scouted the place out somebody has been there before you and left you a testimony some of you are on your way to a place and the place knows you but you don't know it but somebody in your bloodline already offered a sacrifice before you got there to provide you with the assurance that he who began a good work in your grandpa in your grandma in your great grandpa in your great grandma maybe in your daddy or in your mama is continuing it through you because God never stops at one generation that's why he says when he talks about himself I am the God of Abraham I am the God of Isaac I am the God of Jacob and he could go on and say I'm the God of Joseph I'm the God of Reuben I'm the God of Issachar you need to understand God is a God of continuity and he he is working all things after the counsel of his will for those who love him and are the called according to his purpose. With every seed you sow, there's a harvest you grow. And God has a harvest in these last days of souls that he is wanting his people to sow into. And he will bless them for it and establish them in the covenant. I invite you to sow a love gift right now, a love seed into the soil of Mark Sharona Ministries for the sake of the harvest. Sow a $33 love gift right now. And let me put in your hands this powerful brand new series, The Dawn is Breaking. It will encourage, uplift, confirm, and establish you further in what God is doing in this season. Six messages, CD or DVD, your choice for your love gift of $33 or more. If you'll sow a love gift of $53 or more, I'm going to give you an additional companion series entitled, God is going to bless you no matter what. 
and that six series message is going to add to what you're hearing in the dawn is breaking. I promise you, it will indeed bless you. And for those of you that will sow a $73 love gift or more this month, I'm also going to include prophetic prayer cards with decrees from this entire emphasis on the dawn breaking that can direct your prayers, direct your declarations, and direct your confessions in a way that will establish further realms of faith and access to your heavenly blessing in Christ. Call that number now. Sow your best love gift, 33, 53, or 73, and let me put these resources and tools in your hands to empower and equip you to move further in the life Christ has for you.